Another reason is, and this, this shouldn't come as a shock to you, another reason is shops don't make any money with you in the fill station. They only make money if you're in there in the showroom shopping around while your cylinders are getting filled. So that should go without saying as well. We want you in the showroom spending money while we fill your tank. And it does take a while to fill tanks the proper way, you know, to fill them slow enough. So why would you want to be downstairs uh, when you could be in the showroom seeing all the new gear and of course obviously spending money. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, I am going to be filling scuba cylinders. And you have seen me do this in plenty of videos. We just use our cascade bottles, we use compression when we fill them up. But we're going to be doing a random thoughts video. What goes through my mind when I'm actually filling cylinders? And in today's random thought video, why do dive shops not want you in their compressor room? Is it they don't want you near the compressor? They don't want you near the bottles? You know, why do dive shops say, oh, it's employees only in this area? There's actually several reasons that we're going to discuss in today's videos, but I'm going to show you when we do bring customers downstairs into the filling station. I'm even going to show you when I let customers fill their own cylinders. So with that being said, let's jump into today's video. All right, guys, I guess I should start with, it pretty much goes without saying, one of the biggest reasons you're not allowed in fill stations of dive shops is safety considerations or safety concerns. Um, when you see these cylinders, these cylinders are not scuba cylinders. They're not air tanks. They're not nitrox bottles. They are literally bombs. And every single one of these cylinders right here is nothing more than a bomb. Um, you take one of these 80s, they're pressurized to 3,000 PSI, that means that's a 3,000 pound bomb. And if something was to happen, a cylinder was to rupture, and you were standing anywhere near it, obviously you're going to have a major health risk there. Whether it just injures you or it flat out kills you, um, that is definitely a concern. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons you're not allowed in any type of fuel station um, area at your local dive shop. Uh, another reason is, and this, this shouldn't come as a shock to you, another reason is shops don't make any money with you in the fill station they only make money if you're in there in the showroom shopping around while your cylinders are getting filled so that should go without saying as well we want you in the showroom spending money while we fill your tank and it does take a while to fill tanks the proper way you know to fill them slow enough so why would you want to be downstairs uh, when you could be in the showroom seeing all the new gear and of course obviously spending money so those are the two major reasons, safety and obviously for financial purposes, why shops won't allow you in here. Well, to be honest with you, I tend to let people in the fill station. Man, this den is not wanting to stick. I tend to let people in the fill station when I'm filling them to teach them a little bit of uh, stuff, you know, teach them about filling, teach them about nitrox, all that, teaching why I kind of don't like den right now. Um, I think that people need to have a better education in scuba and by getting them down here sometimes, we can give them a better education and teach them about safety protocols and all that. Uh, another reason I would bring somebody down here is obviously if they're renting nitrox and they need a nitrox bottle, well, I'm going to have them come pick out the nitrox bottle they want. They're going to analyze the cylinder themselves. They're going to fill out our logs and they're going to take it for the day. If they are filling doubles, maybe they're bringing me a set of doubles to fill. I'm going to allow them to help me carry it in. I'm not going to hurt my back just because they're going to carry some heavy doubles or they want heavy doubles. I'm going to help have them help me carry them and bring them in. So there are plenty of reasons when we bring people down here to the fill stations. Let me explain really quick why I actually let customers fill their own bottles. You see this O2 station here behind me? Well, we use several different methods to fill O2. We have a booster, we have straight O2, and then of course we have a nitrox stick as well that you can fill O2 with here. And we actually teach a gas blender course where 
you fill your own O2. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to come into our fill station at any time and fill, but during that class, we teach you how to do it. That means you're going to be the one coming down here, inspecting the cylinders, putting the fill whips on them, pumping the O2 in it, mixing air on top, or using the stick, whichever method we do throughout your class, and you're doing that yourself. Then you're going to take the analyzer, you're going to analyze the cylinder, of course, and so, yes, we actually let you into the fill station to uh, play with our compressor and play with all this during those classes so that you learn. And I, I really believe by doing that, it gives you a better understanding of what's going on when we fill tanks. Now, no, not everybody's gonna be allowed down here, but if you're taking a class from us that involves something like this, then yes, we are going to allow you into the fill station. So let's get that one topped off. Everything's good to go. Let's start with this first bottle. It's got about two in it. We want to start filling these bottles here. And it is really hot down here. Let's get some air coming in. There we go. All right, we got five going at a time here. We'll have another one to finish up with. But yeah, just as a quick recap here, you know, first and foremost, it's safety. If one of these cylinders was to explode while filling it, um, obviously it's gonna injure me, possibly even kill me, but I don't want it to kill my customers. Um, and number two, you're not gonna spend any money unless you're up in the showroom. So, you know, that's that's the second major reason shops don't want you in their, in their fill station. But, you know, I'm a little bit indifferent. I like people coming down here. I like teaching about these things. I like teaching people why we do things. Why do we organize the cylinders the way we do? Um, and then when they rent a cylinder, they can pick out whatever tank they want. If they just need air and they want an aluminum 80 or a 63, they can rent it. They're renting pony bottles. We have several different pony bottles to rent. If they would rather have steel over aluminum, they can do that as well. We've got different size steels from 100s down to 80s. Got a couple of 50s as well. So they can rent whatever they need to rent um, simply by coming downstairs in here. And then of course, like I said, if we're teaching them say the uh, gas blender course, they are going to learn how to uh, fill their own cylinders with nitrox. We use pure O2, we pump air on top to dilute it out, or we can run it through the nitrox stick and they learn that process during that training. So yeah, I'm a little bit different. I think shops should open up their fill stations a little bit more to help educate divers. No, you don't just let anybody in here to fill, but uh, you should allow people in to it to see the process and to learn a little bit more about it. So there you go guys, that's my random thoughts while filling dive cylinders. I personally believe that fill stations should be open to the public, not necessarily for the public to come in and fill and maybe even keep the public out during the actual filling process. That means when the air is flowing and transferring, but you know, the pre, the pre setup, inspecting the cylinders, putting the fill whips on, setting up the uh, fill panel, things like that. I think customers should be involved. It's going to make them better educated. It's going to teach them a little bit more. And you never know, it might actually spark an interest. When I show somebody our O2 station and say, hey, we fill up the stick, we fill, you know, partial pressure blending, we use a booster, it could spark an interest into the nitrox course or into the trimix course or even into the gas blender course. Even if they're not going to be filling their own cylinders, the gas blender of course is going to give them plenty of knowledge about how we actually mix gases and why your cylinder must be O2 clean and the whole nine yards of things. So yeah, get your customers involved, show them how your operation works, and I tell you, I think they'll really enjoy diving a lot more. The better educated they become, the more they'll, uh, or the more safer they're going to be, and of course, uh, they'll enjoy their dives a lot more as well. But let me know down in the comment section below, have you ever been inside of a fill station at your local dive shop or do they just kind of keep it as a super secret area just for the staff members? But let me know what you, your thoughts are as well. But that's going to do it for today's video. I really hope you liked it. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you got any questions on fill stations, filling air, filling nitrox, trimix, any of the that stuff, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it. But that's going to do it for today. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.